Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nomen live stream. And uh, thank you for joining us for tonight's event, uh, Marvelous Designer. We're going to have a conversation uh, about live garment creation uh, and some demonstrations. Uh, I'm your host, Adam Hartel. And uh, for those of you who saw the video clip we're playing just before we uh, began our stream tonight, that was actually a, a clip of the Nomen campus. Uh, Nomen is a 3D art school located in Hollywood, California. And we specialize in training artists for careers in games. Uh, animation and visual effects. Uh, and we're happy that our campus will be open for in-person learning starting in the fall term. Uh, so with that, uh, it's my honor to be able to host our guests this evening. Uh, but before I introduce them, I'd like to take care of a couple things up front. First of all, I'd like to thank Lenovo powered by NVIDIA uh, for sponsoring tonight's event. Uh, Lenovo helps us to continue to bring free educational events to you. Uh, additionally, this live stream is going to be added to our stream catalog. Uh, both on our Twitch and YouTube channels. So this that'll be available for viewing after the live stream uh, this evening. Um, and additionally, on our Facebook uh, live feed, there is also the option for closed captioning. So if you have need of closed caption uh, while you're watching this, uh, my colleague uh, is going to share a link in the chat, and you'll be able to head over and uh, view it with closed captioning that way. Uh, so with that said, let me introduce the first of our guests uh, this evening. Uh, Eric Hinckley, who is the business development manager at Marvelous Designer in the Americas. And Eric began working uh, for CLO Virtual Fashion as the US business development manager for Marvelous Designer in the summer of 2020. Uh, previously, he was employed by various boutique entertainment and design companies as a 3D generalist from about 2008. Uh, e equally enthusiastic about video games and fashion, Eric is thrilled to put users in touch with the resources they need to create their best designs. Uh, and his professional background includes design and leadership work in mobile and desktop games, commercials, medical visualization, jewelry design, and large scale public art. And so with that, uh, could you guys please welcome Eric uh, to the stream? Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, there we go. There My we go. Mic we was actually now. muted. So. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for being with us today. Oh, no problem. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, I at this point, I am going to pass the mic off to you because uh, I know you've got you've got some stuff to share with us this evening. And uh, additionally, we have two more guests joining us from Marvelous Designer. Uh, so I'm going to hop in the sidecar, and uh, I'll be keeping my eye on uh, the chat. And uh, my colleague, who's moderating, is going to be feeding questions from the chat through. We'll do our best to kind of bring up questions and context, but we'll also spend some time after um, all of the, the content that our guests have shared this evening to address some questions from the chat as well. So stay engaged there, guys, and don't don't be shy. Uh, so yeah, the floor is yours, Eric. All right, sounds great. Is my, my uh, screen share showing up there as well? It should be coming up. There it is. All right, great. OK, so <clears throat> let me, oh, I'll go back there. So. I assume most of you are here because you are familiar with Marvelous Designer, what it is and how it works. But for those of you that might not be, I'm going to run through a few details for you to help you get up to speed before sharing some very nice artwork created with our software. Oh, and now my uh, presentation isn't updating. Well, that's weird. Okay, so <clears throat> what Marvelous Designer is, Marvel's Designer, oh shoot, man, wow, it, it picked now to start freaking out on me. All right, let's go back. There we are, but the notes, wow. I think all of us who are streaming these days are very all right. familiar with these kind of gremlins. I'm going to try this once more and open yeah. that again because my uh, notes flipped out on me. All right, let's try this. All right. Let's see if that, there we go. Now we're working. Fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> okay, what Marvel Designer is. Marvel Designer is a clothing design software targeted at the video game and animation industries. Our parent company, Clo Virtual Fashion, also has a program called Clo 3D that's targeted at the fashion industry. Both software packages have uh, unique features specific to their intended uses that the other does not. For MD, these features are things like a UV editor and a rate topology tool. For Clo, it's things like a seam tolerances and a print preparation. Our software is based on real world pattern making techniques. If you want 
digital clothing to look and behave as realistically as possible, it makes the most sense to assemble it in a similar manner to how you actually would with a pair of scissors and a sewing machine. Uh, all clothing is traditionally created using <laughs> using flat panels that are stitched together. So in Marvel's Designer, you begin working in a 2D space uh, with tools that are similar to those found in vector graphics software. Uh, and those 2D patterns are stitched together and simulated around your character model in the 3D space. Marvel's designer can either export static 3D meshes for rigging and weighting to a skeleton or baked animation caches that you can match up with your character's animation. A brief history of Marvel's designer. The first version of Marvel's designer was released in 2009. We're pretty young as far as 3D software companies go. Our software was originally adopted by hobbyists in the 3D art community and our software initially spread through the industry by word of mouth alone uh, and eventually made its way to our very first business client, which was uh, Weighted Digital, uh, which is kind of a huge jump from uh, only personal users to just about as big as it gets. I wasn't with the company at the time, but I imagine for those that were, it, it, was, it was a bit of a shock. why 3D artists use Marvel's Designer. Uh, as 3D software packages go, it's very easy to learn. The output is the most realistic cloth simulation available today. And perfect UVs. Uh, because our designs begin life as 2D patterns, the resulting UVs for your mesh have no stretching or distortion, which is, is great for texturing. Our software is significantly faster than creating clothing in other 3D programs. Sculpting clothing in 3D clay programs, for example, is extraordinarily satisfying, but it takes a while. And when you're working as a 3D artist, you don't always have a while. And Marvel's Designer is used by leading game and animation companies all over the world. And some other types of companies that you might not expect, like uh, aerospace companies, architectural design studios, and jewelry design companies. Oh. <laughs> now, now, should you use a software package just because a lot of other people are using it? Of, of course not. But if you enjoy creating clothing, uh, our, our features make Marvel's Designer a, a very useful tool. Oh, it is bouncing around. I'll move my, I'll move, I'll move my, uh, <laughs> I'll move my mouse to a different spot. I'm getting a little too enthusiastic with the, with the clicking. I think. <laughs> All right. Our dynamic fabric properties uh, quickly give you uh, different results based on which selection you assign to your pattern. You can see how the uh, silk in red clings a little bit closer to the underlying avatar and holds its shape a little less than the other fabrics. So you can see how it slumps a little bit here. All of these duplicates of this uh, skirt are pinned in the exact same position. While the synthetic windbreaker fabric all the way over to the right has a rigidness to it with the sharper, more pointed folds. I, I, I recommend using the Pretty broad section, pardon, the pretty broad selection of properties that we include in the software, but you can alter a, a long list of individual uh, properties to make your own. After you have your garments set up with fabric properties using uh, imported animation of your character, you can bake the motion of your fabric selections and export them as Alembic geometry caches. <laughs> OK, solve the mic problem. This is a little illustration of some isolated frames from a baked simulation. A new edition with Marvelous Designer 10 you can create a fitting suit for your character that will allow you to automatically adapt a garment made for one model to fit characters of, a, of an entirely different body type or even species, so long as they have four limbs and a head. 
Also with MD10, we added the dynamic wrinkle brush, which activates simulation in only a localized area so you can create wrinkles and variation in specific spots without slowing down your computer by simulating the entire garment. And lastly, for my intro, I want to cover some of the limits that Marvel's designer has that can create confusion if you aren't aware of them beforehand. So complicated rigid elements that, you're, that you want your garments to connect to or fold against need to be created in another 3D program and imported to, M to MD. Uh, so you can make some simple rigid shapes within Marvel's Designer and export them as OBJs for use as stand-in collision avatars. But if you have a very specific vision of something like, like an like a an ornate belt buckle, for example, your best bet is to create that in another program and import that geometry for use as an avatar or trim. And all animation imported into Marvel's Designer needs to be a geometry cache. At this point in time, we don't have support for joint systems or joint animation. Avatars also need to have enough geometry for the cloth of vert vertices to simulate against. If you have an extremely low poly game character model, the cloth is going to pass right through it and get caught inside it during simulation. You can subdivide avatars in MD to increase our polygon count. But in that case, it's important to make sure that your quads are pretty evenly distributed across the model. And that is all I have as far as details about our software. Uh, now let's take a look at a few MD garments that have been made for recent and upcoming games. We have a few villager garments from Baldur's Gate 3 here. What I, what I really like about this one is that you can see how, what a nice look you can get from really simple 2D patterns. The pant legs are constructed pretty much entirely from straight lines there. While that wouldn't be ideal for a comfortable pair of pants in reality, and it probably would simulate strangely in motion, it's more than sufficient for creating a really good look for a fully weighted character. Here's a second villager outfit. This one gets a little bit more complicated with its, uh, with its pattern shapes. You can see some curves in there that conform a little bit more to the, to the avatar's body. Uh, I, I really like the little uh, peak at the back of the hood there. That's a fun detail. And finally, we have uh, this guy here who has some really nice layering going on. He's got a belt on top of a belt on top of a sort of tabard, tabard pardon, over pants. And in the next clip from the game, you'll see all of these beautiful little outfits running around in terror. Oh, did it not start again? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting for the, <laughs> for the video that wasn't playing for everybody else. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, there they are all being vanished, but uh, yeah, luckily when they are transported to this sort of hell prison, it looks like their, their beautiful clothes are still intact. There we go. Okay, so now here's a here's a more uh, contemporary casual outfit for uh, Far Cry Six. 
you, you can see in the 2D window over here that uh, this clothing this clothing's construction is much closer to that of a real world garment than the previous examples. There's even some uh, double stitching on the back pockets there if you look really, really closely. And in the next clip, you'll see the final rendered result. It's beautiful, Migo. Perfect but useless. I have something for you, Diego. Give me your hands. Papa, Now, I... the grenade is simple. It has four basic parts. Hopefully his clothing will also be okay. Lastly, we have some really nice cached animation from Rainbow Six Siege. You can see how nicely this turned out with all of its different layers and different fabric types. And here is the same clothing in its final rendered glory. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the high-res video in time for this, so for now you'll just have to kind of imagine these beautiful images animating for you. And, well, I, I hope you enjoyed that quick preview of some cool industry artwork. Uh, I, you can really use Marvelous Designer to create any type of clothing for any type of character you can imagine, uh, whether it is a spaceman, a different variety of spaceman, a sort of underwater spaceman, or a pirate. And from there, I'll, uh, I'll 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 hand it off. Yeah, <laughs> I do have some additional images of the pirate, but uh, no, yeah, you don't have to hang around for it. No, no that, that was, was very, very cool, clear. Eric. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Yeah, I heard my voice doubling up there for a second, but we're good. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, we the question that we had come in from our Facebook viewer uh, Douglas Alves. I uh, want you to know we see your, we see you, <laughs> and we will be addressing your question. But actually, our next guest. Uh, is going to be able to elaborate more on the subject bringing up. So just uh, sit tight. Uh, we'll be getting to that. Um, oh, somebody uh, viewing from um, YouTube was just asking about the South Park kids in the video thumbnail coming. Can you can you tell us why that why that image is there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's an image from uh, Travis Davids. He's a really amazing artist that uses uh, Marvel's designer. He's he's excellent. Pretty much everything that he, he creates is, is it's damn near perfect. He's he's stunning. Uh, he's a South African artist, and uh, what, what, I always hit him up to help us out with stuff. But he's he's always busy working. So uh, yeah, he he's got a bunch of stuff on ArtStation. He uses Marvel's designer pretty frequently, and his patterns are. I mean, they're they're pretty close to what you would actually use for manufacturing. They're they're very very nice. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that image when it when it first hit social media. And um, what I love about that design is that you know he's taking something stylized and making it look more realistic, which sometimes means you can lose 
it takes a long, longer time to, to notice what it is you're looking at. But the cool thing about that design is you know instantly that it's South Park. Oh. Um, and of course, that a lot of that comes through through the costume. Yeah, it, it's instantly it, it's instantly recognizable, and I'm like, yes. I, I I grew up in Colorado too, so I have a I have a like a special <laughs> place in my heart for that. There so I, I made yeah. sure to pop it in. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, we're still having uh, you know, we're started working on our backlog of questions coming in. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to introduce our next guest, um, who's going to be presenting to us. Uh, and their name is uh, Megan Delario. Megan is a 3D designer uh, and community manager at Marvelous Designer. Um, as a costumer and seamstress with 17 plus years of combined personal and professional experience in pattern and garment creation in CAD, Megan enjoys teaching these skills to others who are new to sewing and pattern making. With Marvelous Designer, Megan's been able to merge the experience in 3D with classic fashion techniques to teach skills applicable to both apparel and CG industries. So with that, I want to welcome uh, Megan to the stream. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to Hi have there, you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, with, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to I'm going to pass the mic to you and you can take us into uh, what you've got to share with us tonight. All right. Well, you can hang out if you'd like. I'm far, I'm used to uh, streaming on Twitch and answering questions as they come in. So we can uh, go that way as okay, well. Cool. But I'm sure. going to share my screen here. All right. Can we see it? All right, so this yeah, is this is my build. I've got a, 20 minutes to try to get this all through. Move this out of the way. So here, uh, I have the finished renders at the end. Uh, this is a build of a wedding dress that I just did for you guys here. No, I mean, you guys could see it the, uh, the first here. And here I'm actually drafting the skirt. So right now I'm making uh, one, two, three, four garments in the end. I'm gonna be making the petticoat, which is this. Here, I'm actually drafting the petticoat very quickly. I'm using a bunch of features that I don't know if people are uh, familiar with. Um, so <laughs> I realize how fast this is going. So what I did there to actually smooth the curve out very quickly is there's a smooth curve tool, which is, if you can see my mouse, it's this tool right here. You can utilize this tool to uh, much more quickly turn a straight line into a curve or a very complex or ugly curve uh, into a smoother curve like I just did for this skirt. So here's the petticoat and this is going to be the basic silhouette for this uh, garment. So you could actually do this and I would recommend, honestly, uh, depending on your efficiency and needs to probably make this petticoat built into this avatar in a separate program um, and then just bring it in as an OBJ so that you don't have the entire um, <laughs> mesh of the petticoat, but I did want to do this in the most classic way to show you that you can do this because I know uh, the next guest also has a bunch of really good tips and tricks. So I wanted to let him have that. So here I am making, you know, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading the chat. You know someone's pro in their normal seat is time lapse. It's very I fast. It <laughs> <laughs> I have to go really fast because I'm trying to like get the entire build of this thing in there. So what I also should have done in the beginning, you'll see it later on in the stream. I do it at the very end because I make the wedding veil is I should have actually used a GPU simulation for this to make it much more faster, which is why this actually looks like it's going um, at the speed that GPU would be going. Whereas in this case, it's not because um, this is sped up about two times as fast. And I'm just making the, um, the, the petticoat support. I then start making ruffles after this. Um, at the very beginning to get this shape, I basically made a triangle and then I utilized slash and spread, which I don't know if a lot of people use. This is used in the fashion industry, but it's also great for Marvelous Designer because it's the same um, the same concept. Slash and spread allows you without having to slice the material, which I do later and you'll see the difference in the, um, in the, the two different methods of getting a wider fabric. I slash and spread this. So I had the same center point being at the waistband and I wanted to make this into a cone shape as you can see here. So I actually just used slash and spread, started at the base of the waistband and then brought it down to the hem of this and then just pivoted it out to make that cone very quickly. And here I'm just saving each iteration just in case we have, qu we have uh, questions at the end that people want to see. So I'm gonna scrub a little bit cause I do have four 40 minutes instead of 20. Here I've frozen the skirt now. I'm keeping them separate pieces at this point. They are still symmetrically linked, but I did want to have this waistband because I'm going to be using this waistband as the waistband for this skirt because I'm making this wedding dress. It's based off of an 80s style wedding dress. So this wedding dress is going to end up being um, three, uh, three pieces in total minus the actual petticoat that I'm making here, but everything's being um, sewn into the petticoat for the skirt. 
I did want to rewind and pause right here, which I don't know. I'm trying to get as many little uh, tips in here as I can. What I just did here was I chose the two segment lines on the ends of the pattern and I chose offset as internal line. You can do this with straight lines. This is also the trick for getting your pleats in there and getting the math, just mathing um, in thirds. Um, we do teach this on the pleating tutorial on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm offsetting along on curves so I can get the um, so I can get the the ruffles or the cone shape so I can actually start making those larger ruffles that end up tearing into each other. I use this a lot for um, design and um, let me continue that going. So you can see that and you can also do this for padding. So you can utilize this for making um, like puff jackets, making quilts textures. You can use this really quickly instead of having to manually draw in all those lines. Uh, let's see, I remember we had two questions. I don't know if, um, actually you can see here, one more tr one more tip that I do is I just, I saw the large ruffles that are going to be going to the skirt. I selected them in the 3D window and I chose superimpose over. This is going to be the best practice way to work with Marvelous Designer though, as you can see here, it's quite large. I do end up using the GPU simulation to pull out these large pieces of fabric so that they can actually come out of the, um, out of the skirt faster and then I use the stiffening or uh, control H which is the hot key. So the reason that I did superimpose instead of letting the fabric sim into it is it does utilize gravity. So if it's f flying in, it'll actually slingshot and some users that are new to Marvelous Designer, if they let things like this super far out into the workspace fly into the, into the actual cloth, it will cause um, simulation issues so it is best to work if you can you'll see uh i do encounter some t some points where i can't do the, use uh, superimpose it is best to use superimpose side over or under when you can and then uh, make adjustments from then on so uh someone asked about finding clothing patterns as a as this sim as this is uh skirts being built as someone asked uh, where to find clothing patterns uh there's a bunch of free resources on archive.org actually in, I believe we'll share our Discord link later on. Um, but in our Discord, we have a bunch of free resources. Archive.org has a bunch of free historical patterns that you can use in actual historical textbooks. You can use normal patterns. Um, you can also just use pattern blocks. A lot of the time you can find textbooks for those patterns and for actually pattern manipulation. If someone is sharing on the internet a flat pattern, of their uh that they have are showing you a pattern manipulation for you can actually use those and um either the techniques or you can tr attempt to trace them just be aware there are some patterns you don't want to steal someone's someone's work and i do not encourage uh, the theft of patterns or uh, people's uh, flat patterns in any way shape or form especially in my discord uh, but here you'll also see on the screen um I split the skirt because I'm now making the overskirt. I've completely finished this under the understructure, which is the petticoat. I'm making the overskirt now, which uh, has gathering on in the back and on the sides. So what I did was I split it and then I opened it. Yes, sorry, in the Marvelous Designer Discord, we have it. Um, I'm going to pause and rewind this here because this is the, the building part's always the most interesting part. Come on. So here you'll see me creating a sewing relationship here. I create a sewing relationship to the larger skirt to the waistband, which is why I froze everything. So the front is actually sewn in so it doesn't have any uh, gathering or wrinkles, whereas the rest of it is going to be gathered. And that is why it has two different sewing relationships. I used the uh, free sewing tool or the M hotkey to do this. And then someone asked a question about collision issues in multiple layers. Um, so you'll see here, actually, um, this is a way to fix it is to use the select mesh box tool. You can select it in the 3d window and you can select it. Well, I'm not, I'm not running it just so the chat knows I'll answer that question later. Um, you can select the 3d window and the 2d window, and you can just select that portion of the mesh to pull it out. You can also utilize the brush tool to do the same thing. Um, as well as if you're having multiple layers, like I do here, I also have multiple layers on the bodice and then the skirt. And then on top of that, I have a whole wedding veil that is bigger than most of the most things in the scenes that I would recommend people place. Um, so you want to use layers and you'll see me use layers. But here in the 3D in the 2D window, you'll see a little layer option that's popping and flashing back and forth. 
I've already made this uh, this layer one and then the other one layer two. So if you want something to be above another pattern piece, so let's just say a jacket is above a shirt, every single pattern piece for that jacket, make that layer one, everything underneath that jacket, make that layer zero. But once you are done fixing and adjusting your layers, you do want to make those layers zero before you um, export or before you do any animation in Marvelous Designer. And so you can see here, I do often use uh, strengthen or stiffen or control H to um, preset a lot of my layers while I'm working in Marvelous Designer uh, because it'll at least get my silhouette and then it lets it fall down. You can see here, I'm checking the silhouette of how it drapes on the underneath, on the underneath under structure on the petticoat. Normally a petticoat would actually have multiple layers. It would have a it would have boning, it would have channels, it would have um, tulle over it, and then we would have the satin overskirt that would also have a few layers underneath it with more ruffles. But in this case, I've just done the, the few layers to get the silhouette. And what's helping me get that look without having those layers is having it stiffen and is to stiffen the fabric. In this case, I'm using the Silk Duchess satin. It tends to be, a, um, it's thinner than how I wanted it to look, which is why I'm stabilizing it. And you can see on the screen, it's orange. I chose to go to the fabric options and I went down to Bond and Skive. And in those options, I did um, turn that on. Normally you wouldn't put interfacing, which is generally like on a men's shirt collar on a, on a fabric, but this is Marvelous Designer. I can do whatever I want. Um, for recommended specs, our recommended PC specs are 16 gigabytes of RAM or higher, Intel Core 7 and uh, 3.0 gigahertz or higher, and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 745 or above. I don't remember what I have. This is my, my computer that I built in like 2016, um, but it, it meets the specs. Uh, here, um, actually I wanted to talk about this before we actually go any further. Here, here's another tool that a lot of people don't uh, might not know to use in Marvelous Designer if they actually have it. It's the draw on, or it's the 3D line tool. There's one for the avatar and there's one for the for the fabric. Here I'm just drawing on the cloth in the 3D window using backspace when I make a mistake to draw the silhouette of, um, I'm making a bunch of ruffles in the center front where I'm going to be then putting a bunch of lace on top. And so, here I'm also checking, it draws perfectly however you lay it in Marvelous Designer. So as you can see in the 2D window, I'm making adjustments to make it cleaner because I didn't really want to have those, uh, <laughs> the wobbly line there. I wanted this to be a nice curve. And here I'm cleaning, I'm a, uh, starting to design that shape in the 2D window where I drew it on in the 3D window. You can design in the 2D window or the 3D window utilizing internal lines and you've seen me do the two different ways to do it. What's the difference between Marvelous Designer and Clo? Like Eric said earlier with Marvelous Designer and Clo, Clo has features and tools that are geared toward the fashion industry, whereas Marvelous Designer has features and tools geared towards the video game, VXFX and film industries. And here I can scrub some more because I, I know I don't have a lot of time. Here I've made my internal lines for my, my ruffles. I'm actually just going to take this top triangle here to make the exact ruffle that I want to make, that I want to make because it's just, that's the start of it. So I'm just going to be making and utilizing slash and spread like you just saw me do there. Let's rewind that for a second. So I end up cutting this and then I use the slash and spread tool to pivot it from that corner. So that adds volume in the bottom which then makes us into that nice curve. And then I'm using that smooth curve tool to drag and clean up that line very quickly instead of having to adjust it by hand or use um, Bezier curves, for example. Here I'm sewing it into that 2D, into the uh, 2D, into the internal line there. And I did use, I just tried to move into the, in the 3D space. I just, uh, <laughs> I did use the um, superimpose over, but you can see that it is causing collision if I was to simulate. So it does make it a little bit easier to pull it apart. I do redraw this just because I didn't like the shape, I guess. I don't remember why, but let's scrub a little bit forward. See, I used superimpose and then I just pulled it a little bit away just because it was inside. Sometimes it works perfectly. Sometimes it doesn't depending on the shape of the pattern that you've made. And then after this, I'm using the, um, the Z hotkey. I'm actually just measuring the line to then double 
the line to make a ruffle. So I, I measure all of those internal lines and then I double them to make ruffles. You can just double or triple. Double is a safe amount and you can see here I'm placing them in the 3D window. Some type superimpose works. In this case, it, it doesn't because there's so many ruffles and there are still a 20 particle distance. So it's actually easier to bring them closer to the, to the skirt without simulating yet. And here I'm using the free sewing tool to actually just attach those together. Scrub through because I have more tips. And I do that for all of the skirt. There's a lot of ruffles. It took it took a while. Ah. Here I'm adjusting the train and making it longer just because I thought that I wanted to make rendering take a little bit longer and add add more triangles. I wanted I wanted a cathedral train and I I just did. So here I, here's the little trick that I do. You can use the, you can do two different things. I separated the skirt top portion from the lower portion just so I could do a little bit of faster of a freeze option, but you can do the inverse and select all of the, select all of the lower portion of the skirt that you want to freeze and then you can partial freeze that and toggle that on and off. And so that'll make it easier to simulate when I bring the shirt in. So now that I'm working on the shirt, I did want to touch on a few things because it'll be a little faster. Here for this top, I'm making this bodice. I'm actually using the modular configurator, which not a lot of people know exists. I'm actually just stealing the sleeves from the t-shirts because I don't want to draft a t-shirt from scratch. We have a whole bunch of free patterns available for you for male and female avatars and I'm just utilizing that free one. Here I'm bringing in an asset that I had worked on for another project, which was one of our uh, basic tutorials, which you can follow along to make a fit dress like this. Um, and here I'm actually sewing the sleeves into the bodice of this dress. So whenever you're working on projects and if you are using, okay, I'm going, f I'm a little over time. But if you're working on projects, save your assets. Here I'm just designing this. I'm cutting the top and I'm making a mutton sleeve. This is again an 80s dress. So again, I'm using slash and spread, making that beautiful mutton sleeve. This is why it looks like that because it looks like a leg of lamb. Here I'm applying the textures. We do have substance textures in now and I'm applying those textures scrubbing through. I'm designing this now as I'm going through. The substance textures have a bunch of different options, so I'm toggling those on and off. I'm making it a little bit of an off-white, but you will, at the end, I will show you the other colors because I do uh, yellow it. Here I've actually uh, sliced this away and I've cut it to make a, a lace trim at the hem. And here I'm just designing that top. I'm spinning it and I'm playing around with this sign. I've, I've made some like little cheater appliques here to have my floating lace. There are different and better ways to do it, but I did want to work exclusively in Marvelous Designer for this. Uh, you can you can join our Discord and ask questions. I, I uh, mainly teach a Marvelous Designer, so I haven't had a chance to make a lot of things. This is the first one I think I've made in a long time, other than our streams that we do do, but they are basically uh, generally two 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 hour streams. Uh, so you can check out our YouTube channel, the Marvelous Designer YouTube channel, and you can check out our um, the Discord. I, I'm a moderator on our Discord channel. Here I'm doing the same thing. I'm adding more uh, ruffles and making those into lace. And here I'm applying the, I've turned all of the basic fabrics now into the actual textures and I'm applying more lace because I just, I wanted that 80s look. And here I'm actually just, I'm, I'm just using the normal maps <laughs> for as graphics and I'm applying them as graphics. And then I'm just, again, just using the normal maps again for these lace appliques to make that designed skirt here. You can see the normal map, the normal maps here, but I do end up making them cream. And I'll scrub through a little bit more. And I'm just playing around, figuring out how I wanna place them. And here is again, um, the person who had another question about layering. This is the major portion for layering. I'm unfreezing everything that I want to be 
the upper layer, but I'm also stiffening it just because I don't want it to move as much as I want the under portion to move. Everything in the upper layer is layer one, everything below it is layer zero. And that's what's happening and how this skirt is going underneath it with so much fabric going on. These are also at like 20 particle distance, or not 20 particle distance, five particle distance, which makes it a lot easier. And that to have the wrinkles be made. And that's why I brought just the upper portion and sliced it apart. Because if I, if I didn't, it would have to simulate the entire skirt, which is not what I really wanted at this time. I do end up simulating the entire skirt and having it lay, but this way was a lot faster. And here's the last thing. Here is me using GPU simulation to make that wedding veil. So this is the best portion. This is the best way to utilize GPU simulation is to, if you have a large amount of fabric that you're working with, is to bring it into the workspace, drop it first, and then and then simulate. You can see the GPU simulation does have um, a very different property involving collision and respecting collision thickness compared to CPU, which is why we generally recommend working in GPU first, bring in large pieces, have them settle, and then work in CPU, which is what you're going to see here. That green line for just the veil, like most veils, it's literally just gathered together. So I just used the elastic property across an internal line for this. And since I know I'm, I, since I made this a giant cathedral veil, I'm just pulling it around to her side so I could take a nice rendered photo of this. And I'm pulling it away to where I know the skirt is going to be. I've then applied my, uh, my fabric, which is just a white tool. And then I bring it into the workspace. So I bring the rest of everything that I've been working on into the workspace, and then I'm going to simulate it while everything else is frozen or deactivated where I know it's not going to be having, uh, not going to be touching the veil at all. Because that will help speed up my simulation, which is why you see some things that are blue, those are deactivated entirely. So things will pass through them if you're not careful. And here, another, here I am again using the select mesh box tool to pull it out. And then I'm just pulling it around here. And then I do simulate it very, very cleanly for a long period of time after this. But then I can now, now that I've sped through it, it's like it's always there's always the very beginning that I have like all the stuff to do. And then you're just cleaning it all everything else up. But let me show you those photos now that I'm done. Let me do. Here. Let me grab, let me fly through them, of course. All right, so this is it before the lace. I have them with the lace too, but it's better with the lace. So here is the finished image. The, I, uh, I exported these and rendered them at uh, squares of uh, 1920 squares. So you can see the finished look, including the appliques and the veil. It did look pretty solid in the actual software but this is how it does look on her she's not really posed but this was just for the speed build let's go ahead and i'll just toggle through them and you can just see the different angles of the embroidery that i've placed on there as a graphic which is a is a nice cheat way i have no background that's why they're popping out like that and these are mostly all substance textures any courses from Marvelous Designer to go from zero to hero? Uh, we have free training YouTube videos on our YouTube channel that you can follow. Some have my voice. So you can see here just close-ups of these of this. And you can actually see, I really like how this looks with the layering of the, the bodice. Normally, this bodice would have a lot more boning and things like that in it that are giving it support structure. But in this case, it doesn't. And I cheated it using um, stiffening and hardening. And here it is if it was very, very yellow and old. We, again, use more substance textures. And so these are the same uh, angles and things like that. But if it was aged lace, it tends to get very yellow over time for wedding dresses. So I just chose um, a yellow color. But yeah, and that is it for me. That is the wedding dress. Unless you guys have questions, I'm more ha than happy to answer like at the very end. Megan, you're such a pro. You you just like handled it all and, and addressed the questions as they came in. It was really cool. Um, Thank you. I'm and... like, <laughs> I felt like an auctioneer. 
<laughs> um, and now I know what a mutton sleeve is. Yeah. So I, I feel like I've been enriched and I've gained new knowledge that I never had before. Um, but that was really cool to watch. How long did that take you from start to finish in real time? Just out of curiosity. Um, in real time, it took basically just the two days. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did a lot of uh, things wrong because I was also recording using oh, sure. a, heavy CP, a heavy CPU load software that just made everything worse. So I... Um, it should have really just taken like a day and a half, like a work day and a half. Um, but the only thing that took the longest time was really just settling those, um, the ruffles, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, that that whole build, like all of the major portions of the build, that was two hours of video total. Um, it's just a case of just styling it and then rendering it just took the longest one as, as always. Oh yeah, of course. And then uh, sort of a follow-up question to some of the learning-based questions that came up. Um, I'm curious what, say, and this is uh, maybe a hypothetical, maybe it's a real world situation, I don't know. Um, someone who has a lot of experience in fashion mm -hmm. and in sewing, but has no experience in 3D, what would that learning curve be like the, for them if they were like, oh, wow, I wanna I want to start designing in Marvelous? That, that was actually pretty much me a couple of years ago. It mm, was actually really okay. easy. So with Marvelous Designer is if you have experience in CAD and you have experience with patterns and pattern adjustments, um, like fitting people, um, then you can very quickly use Marvelous Designer or Clo, which is the sister software that Eric referenced uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. It's it's a case of because all of the skills and the techniques are based in the real pattern patterning techniques, is yeah. they all apply. Um, the only difference is like you can't, you, you have to accommodate for everything in 3D. So it's, everything's a mesh, everything has collision thickness. Um, so it is a relatively quick learning curve. That's that really way. cool. Um, so in, in some sense, it almost could be a crossover tool, you know, it, like an introduction for someone into the world of 3D who might be more familiar with, with you know, the traditional costume design, mm -hmm. sewing, this kind of thing route. That's great. Um, no, very cool to hear. Um, so yeah, I think we, yeah, we were able to address most of the questions, which had a lot to do with learning and it's very cool that you guys offer learning resources for free. Um, it's always great to get it from the source, um, from the people who are actually making it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Megan. I'm going to introduce our third guest, uh, this evening, um, who is, uh, Vichar BN and, um, Vichar is the department director for games at Technicolor, uh, Bengaluru. And Vichar is skilled and experienced in three. Uh, uh, he's a skilled and experienced 3D professional with over 15 years of combined experience in production and gaming. Uh, he also has over 10 years experience in traditional art, clay sculpting, stone, metal painting, uh, and illustration, landscape, gardening, restoration, art installation, and knowledge on various special effects makeup. Uh, so with that, I want to say, Vichar, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, uh, hey, Adam, thank you. Thanks for, uh, you know, a long introduction. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Can you uh, see my screen? Uh, it should come up in just a moment. Getting your screen share up. Okay. Our, uh, our producer should be handling that for us, and uh, they'll let us know if... Uh, they're just asking if you can reshare your screen, Vichar. Okay. Yeah. Can you see my uh, screen now? Just waiting for a, there we go all right we've got it up so yeah the floor is yours um i'll okay. let you take it from here Pichar. thank you okay uh hello everyone uh welcome uh let me introduce a little bit in depth uh i'm born and brought up uh in mysore uh one of the heritage city of uh india i was uh, very much inspired from the uh, art and architecture of uh mysore so that uh helped me to you know take my career towards art so I pursued my master's in uh, sculpting. And uh, after my uh, completion of my master's, I got an opportunity to work with la the late Srikant Dattavadir, the king of Mysore. I was a personal sculptor for king of Mysore. So I, I, I did a couple of commission work for him. I uh, did a lot of restoration work for the Mysore palace. So this is one of my sculpt, which I uh, did for the uh, late king. Uh, it's for his personal collection. This is a life size uh, done in plaster. So currently I'm working in uh, Technicolor as a department director for uh, game division. 
So I have put across a small uh, uh, video uh, of my work. So I would like to show that. So uh, I will be, uh, you know, uh, MD uh, played a big role, uh, you know, for me uh, since I come from a traditional background. So I always treat more like uh, MD as, uh, you know, sculptorly uh, kind of a feel, uh, which really helps me to achieve a certain uh, result very quickly. Uh, so I will be showing you today uh, two approach. One is traditional approach and one is hybrid approach. So let me start with uh, traditional approach. As it says, it's one way, uh, one way traffic. Uh, it's like, you know, you always uh, we create from MDA and take it to the th uh, third software, uh, third party software. So it's it's uh, more of that approach. So let me uh, show you uh, one of my work, which I did uh, for this. Uh, I have pre recorded this, so I will be uh, running through the process. So first, uh, I created a plane and, uh, you know, assigned a texture then uh, you know added a, a texture to that uh, i had collected a couple of 2d patterns it was very easy uh, for me to trace out uh, certain elements so that will be very handy so uh, you know adjust the texture and uh, you know trace out the pattern so so it was easy for me uh, since uh, i don't come from uh, you know uh, uh, you know, stitching or I don't have knowledge. So that time I uh, used to learn in this way, keeping this pattern behind and, you know, uh, trying to mimic this. So that that gave me a little more confident uh, using MD. So uh, uh, like this, I, I uh, started, uh, you know, building patterns, understanding the pattern, how to cut a pattern. So it was very helpful for me. Uh, so it is very fast to get the certain result. So uh, in this fashion, I, I uh, you know, uh, traced all the patterns so yeah so then assign the uh, thing to just to see how it is going around so uh, this is a very uh, helpful uh, process and uh, usually what i do is i collect a lot of references uh, real uh, 2d pattern references from the uh, you know uh, cloth factories and stuff like that as a library for myself for a reference uh, it's not exactly to copy that it's about understanding how the 2d pattern cuts because it becomes very handy and very helpful so it's a as a student as an artist we should have a library of uh, you know uh, 2d patterns it really helps to uh, you know break the code and it will really uh, helps us to uh, you know speed up the process
so th this fashion i uh, created all the patterns uh, and uh, you know modified according to my requ uh, requirement uh, then i uh, sewed the pattern uh, with uh, you know respected uh, you know pieces with uh, you know so this is this is uh, uh, you know uh, the baby which i wanted to create and uh, you know wanted to achieve the uh, uh, the cloth feel of it like you know the bathrobe the every uh, cloth detail i wanted to you know achieve in 3d I, as a sculptor i would like to have the tactileness feel in my uh, you know model so that's where uh, you know uh, i quickly blocked out everything in md and uh, you know took it to zbrush and uh, i will be showing in the next process so once I was happy, I uh, took it into ZBrush, and uh, you know, one best thing is in MD, it's uh, you know, uh, it does automatic QV, and it's very easy to do a poly group, and give a thickness in ZBrush. So I gave uh, thickness, and uh, I also added uh, you know the ear and the uh, you know uh, nose uh, for that to look uh, uh, you know more uh, uh, real to the uh, reference what I had followed. Uh, then I created uh, different uh, brushes uh, using displacement and uh, individual, uh, you know, uh, strands in this fashion. And uh, once I created that, uh, I used a chisel brush uh, with, uh, you know, with this alpha and uh, created a separate layer and started, uh, you know, placing on uh, top of it to get that, uh, you know, cloth detail. Uh, because I, uh, as I was telling, uh, for me the tactileness is very important. I I use uh, MD more, uh, you know, as an artistic way, more sculptorly. Because uh, uh, if you've seen my works, I I always use more sculptorly approach. Uh, so this is uh, one of uh, my exploration which I did using uh, MD. But MD was very helpful for me uh, since uh, you know it was very easy and very fast to uh, you know turn out the basic shape and uh, you know it helped me to achieve what i was looking for in the sculpt so manually i i placed all the uh, you know uh, cloth uh, detail or the cloth uh, texture manually uh, you could see that bathrobe uh, having all the threads coming out so wanted to uh, get the tactileness feel of it so this is uh, moreover uh, you know my uh, traditional approach uh, it's a, a blend of uh, you know both software where I could uh, you know get this final result. So this was the mood board. Oh, sorry. I don't know what is happening. It's jumping. Okay, sorry. Uh, this was the mood board which I followed. Uh, I wanted to achieve uh, uh, you know the the small details of that you know tactileness and everything so uh, that really helped me to uh, you know uh, marvelous helped me to get this result way faster so you usually uh, i create a mood board when i start my work i usually create a mood board and i try to you know get the final look of it it's always important to have a mood board uh, when you're creating something uh, you know it's always to refer back and see uh, or you get the final output what you're looking for when you have a, a nice mood board so that is uh, that comes very handy so this is the uh, final sorry i don't know it's jumping okay uh, this is the this is the final uh, output which i got uh, uh, i rendered in key shot so i i uh, you know i i have spent a lot of uh, you know exploration doing back and forth to achieve this so it was fun actually so let me uh, jump to the next uh, process uh, it, this is my one of my favorite uh, approach it's called hybrid approach it's a two way approach so it's uh, like as i was telling about uh, you know uh, traditional approach it's one way where you create from md and take it to the third software in this approach you can bring back uh, from the third party and still you can you know work as a uh, you know cloth so let me uh, show you some example what i created using uh, oh sorry yeah 
so this was uh, the mood board which uh, you know uh, i used i wanted to get uh, the wevel feel or the wet cloth feel i was inspired from the you know ma uh, uh, great masters wevel sculptures so i wanted to use this because uh, you know creating a sari is uh, very tough in md and uh, sculpting also i wanted to get that wetness and everything so uh, this was my uh, basic idea when i started it so let me uh, run the video for that so uh, initially i started uh, you know a basic uh, cloth in md uh, i i didn't uh, you know give uh, much important for the patterns 2d pattern because this is a hybrid approach so for me uh, 2d pattern doesn't matter at this point of time so first i uh, created a certain uh, you know uh, uh, base kind of a thing of sari so so i i kept uh, all the uh, you know uh, particle as four so that i get uh, smaller wrinkles uh, particle distance and rest and all as uh, normal and uh, uh, gave um, you know uh, the fabric material muslin so it is like a silky kind of a material so that i uh, it sticks to the body so started that and exported as a obj i think it's low so uh, with the default weld i exported out and uh, unfortunately uh, when i was doing this i lost the file so i had to change the body i wanted to do all the changes so what i did is i had only the uh, cloth uh, you know the cloth uh, what i had exported i took that and uh, you know i modified it and one good thing is as i was telling you can uh, you know polygroup by uv because it has a uv uh, when we export from md so that was really helpful for me to uh, you know isolate and work certain things so uh, in this process what i did was i was uh, you know trying to adjust to the body a new body and uh, you know uh, changing uh, how i wanted uh, sculpturally because uh, uh, i wanted in a certain way uh, the drape should happen in certain way and i wanted more of uh, as i was telling the wet feel so once i did that uh, once i adjusted everything the flow uh, uh, and the wetness and everything so i'm just uh, exported out as a, a new pattern and this gets interesting here actually this process is uh, uh, one thing which you, uh, you have to take care so once again what i did is uh, what i've done in uh, adjusted in zbrush i'm bringing back here once again as a garment so once i imported back i think i should have imported back i i uh, resimmed it once again so that you know whatever adjustment i have done in uh, uh, zebra it could you know work better uh, this is the speciality in md where uh, you can bring a third party mesh also and you know you, uh, you can still uh, simulate it it works as a cloth it it behaves like a cloth so that's a fun part so whatever adjusted uh, adjustment i had done in uh, zebra i was able to bring here and uh, you know uh, resimmit according to my uh, you know uh, requirement <clears throat> so still i'm uh, retaining the sculpt what i had previously and uh, you know still i was able to uh, 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 sim it actually so now i uh, once again export back as a obj after simming so i have kept the default setting as a weld everything and uh, i was uh, you know uh, I will re-import that mesh. But one thing here is uh, you need to keep in mind is uh, the vertex count should be same when you are re-importing and uh, exporting the uh, 
you know the cloth if it is different it will uh, affect a later uh, process so what i did was once i uh, you know after seaming uh, i bought it in zbrush and you know with poly group uh, uh, you know auto group with uv i sculpted out the whole uh, you know how i want wrinkle it's a uh, as i said it is a hybrid uh, process where i wanted certain way certain uh, uh, kind of wrinkle to be uh, seen in certain way as i had the reference so i manually sculpted out certain area and that is the fun part of this hybrid workflow so i'm i'm uh, i'm not showing the whole uh, sculpt i'm just uh, doing a certain portion of it uh, you know i wanted that uh, uh, wetness feel attaching to, you know it's as, as if it is wrapped to the body so uh, i sculpted uh, on all the uh, part of the body so that i get that wetty feel let me scrub then uh, in this process also like I, I adjusted which is you know uh, penetrating and everything so i fixed it since i had done changes for the body so that's a uh, advantage in uh, uh, marvelous is like you know when it throws you uh, with the uv it is very easy to do a poly group and uh, you know fix everything way faster so you need not have to worry about making poly group and stuff it uh, makes a uh, you know as according to the pattern how you have uh, created in md so right now i'm not worrying about uh, how the forms in, uh, this thing the cloth is happening uh, i'm uh, showing this process this is a uh, you know a fun process actually which i really love uh, using this uh, uh, technique because it gives me uh, you know combination of sculpt and as well as using uh, the simulation the marvelous designer fullest so i'm not going to clean much i'm i'm just uh, you know uh, removing the penetration and uh, you know doing a back and forth so once i'm happy with it uh, i exported out i think it's video so exported on the same mesh what i had imported because i have not added any smooth i have uh, sculpted without smooth uh, the uh, vertex counts are same so this is one of the important process here uh, you know one of the st uh, strongest in md is uh, while importing uh, there is an muff uh, target option is there so use that and you can set up the frame rate how much frame it has to take the shape so i was able to you know bring back my sculpt what i have done in uh, zbrush i use as a muff target here and uh, if you see uh, still my sculpt is there but uh, it is smoothening out and it's giving a simulation feel for me uh it since it's a heavier it takes a little time so uh you know uh, I, i was still able to if you see uh, certain wrinkles it's still retained how i want i didn't wanted to lose that because usually when you do a cloth when you uh, do sim everything you lose lot of things but uh, still i was able to retain the wrinkles and the sculpt what i had so that is the advantage as uh, you know as i was telling uh, i would like to have something very sculpturally so like this i did back and forth uh, the process to achieve uh, you know different part of the sari uh, you know uh, to get this feel so i'm not showing the entire uh, thing what i followed so uh, the next thing is uh, i imported to zbrush and uh, i exported as a single piece of the uh, uh, cloth and uh, to get even more uh, better wrinkle i used one second let me scrub this yeah one of the uh, one one more coolest feature here in uh, md 
uh, it's a wind system so i wanted that uh, you know even more a smaller wrinkle in my sculpt so uh, still i you know uh, i was able to use the uh, you know cloth uh, material for this and uh, i did not have to worry about the 2d pattern what i have and i pinned uh, the areas which i don't want to be affected i uh, you know kept it open where i just want uh, certain wrinkles to be visible so uh, if you uh, uh, you know if you don't want in certain areas you can uh, you know kind of a masking kind of a thing i used this uh, this one i pinned it up so unwanted area i just uh, you know pinned then used a wind deformer let me scrub a bit it's a bit slow in environment you have that uh, you know wind controller um uh, majority of them don't use this but i really uh, love this feature actually this is a very cool feature one of the cool feature actually in uh, marvelous designer uh, so there are uh, uh, you know i can get very uh, precise wrinkle using this and it's like i'm sculpting still a simulation but still i'm you know able to sculpt and there is a two uh, this thing one is uh, uh, you know planar and one is spherical so i use a uh, spherical the wind blows in a spherical manner and uh, you can control the strength of the wind uh, so you have to uh, play around what what uh, you know the strength you need and how the wrinkle should form so it's a, a hit and run kind of a thing you have to uh, keep on playing the values to get certain result so i have uh, activated the wind you could see that you know the way uh, uh, you know the cloth is getting wrinkled uh, it's really nice where it would have taken a lot of time for me to sculpt it but uh, you know this this really helped me out to uh, get the desired look and feel what i was looking for so you can play around by moving the uh, you know the uh, the spear uh, up and down the wrinkles change according to that based on the wind so uh, since i wanted to get that rainy feel or a wet feel so uh, i played around uh, in multiple uh, uh, you know uh, angles i kept it in multiple angles and uh, try to achieve this wrinkle so you could see the result actually so when i'm bringing close or taking up you are getting that very sharper wrinkle a smaller wrinkle uh, so it's a blend of both where i'm using simulation also as well as sculpt also so it gives me the freedom like as i uh, as a sculptor i would love to have something hand sculpted and as well as you know something uh, simulation so uh, this is one thing which i oftenly use this process for my personal sculpt work but it's very handy actually so yeah so so this was the final uh, result and i created a uh, rain uh, you know the water uh, uh, effects everything in the zbrush uh, to get that wet feel so uh, this was very uh, this was the first time where i was trying out something you know the two way uh, it was it was uh, md gave me that uh, you know freedom of uh, artistic freedom where i could take in both way it's not only just traditional way because people think that md is more of you know you need to learn 2d pattern and you have to uh, have a knowledge of it but uh, like if you are more of a artistic guy where you don't want to get into that there is a possibility to use md in this way also where uh, you know in the next process i will be showing where you need not have to create anything in uh, md and uh, how do we take it further so let me show you a video for that so uh, in this what i'm trying to do is i'm uh, creating a different uh, you know uh, mesh or whatever uh, already which has been used like example uh, if you have a gray uh, game and you want to up raise your game and you have already created a mesh and you don't have time to create uh, you know the uh, you know the time frame is very less and uh, you have to finish the work way faster this will be very handy to use in this uh, manner uh, and it's very fast and you get certain things uh, the result very easily 
and you can reuse because uh, time is matters when it comes to production so uh, i will show you a process where uh, you know you can uh, smartly uh, bring the third uh, party software uh, you know cloth which you have created or a low poly watch you have created and how do you simulate and get a better result so in this uh, i had uh, you know a old uh, uh, dress which been created and i have used the uh, default uh, female uh, body and you are readjusting uh, the cloth uh, what I, uh, what uh, previously was built at so i adjusted the whole cloth according to the body uh, with a, just a mo tool just to uh, fasten up the process and it's a quad neat mesh uh, where uh, you can uh, easily get the result and uh, imagine if you have a old asset uh, you know uh, it's uh, you want to uh, make it uh, you know you didn't know uh, a marvelous design at that time but you still you want to enhance the uh, model so this is the process which you can use so i exported both uh, you know the body and the top i would scrub a bit yeah so i imported the body and the top and uh, one more important thing is you have to make sure that you load as garment that is the important thing here in this process so i i uh, got this fabric which i created in the third uh, you know in the different software so i kept the particle distance a little higher and uh, you know i rest of the thing i kept it uh, as normal and then i uh, you know simmed it so you could see how nicely uh, i was able to get the wrinkle or the cloth feel and it started adjusting to the thing and one more uh, thing which i forgot to mention here is i have uh, you know uh, double side thickness uh, since i had uh, given thickness to that i was able to seam that also without any problem so you can you know move around play around and you can get certain wrinkles how you want it's a very quick fix and you know it's a, uh, nowadays in gaming industry uh, you know everyone wants to uh, uh, you know appraise their uh, character and you don't have much time frame time budget and uh, if you have a mesh you can really bring here and uh, still create a thing and uh, you can take it out and project this detail and create a normal map so that's very faster and it saves a lot of time so md is not only just one way it's always a two way approach is there for this it, it supports uh, you know your third party so you know mesh also to uh, get a uh, desired look and feel and here you know, i need not have to worry about the 2d pattern at all so as an artist uh, you know as a sculptor uh, if i'm not comfortable do, uh, doing 2d pattern and this is the best way to you know explore uh, marvelous designer this is one of the way uh, i usually use a blend of this two but as i was telling you need to learn in a, in a proper way uh, first you need to learn how to create a 2d pattern that really helps you to understand the whole process but yes uh, uh, you know it gives a uh, uh, artistic up, uh, it's a, supports artistic approach also so you we could use in both way so you can play around with uh, you know certain uh, you know uh, uh, wrinkles how you want certain way and you can give uh, certain uh, you know parameters for the cloth if you want silk cotton jeans it behaves it supports so even though it is a, a outside mesh it supports everything so this is a cool feature which uh, i i use a lot in my uh, uh, you know process where i get more of uh, you know where i can control and where i can make it more uh, you know sculpturally kind of a thing so so th uh, uh, this is the uh, fuse example which i have uh, created using the same process like uh, the bottom cloth i had done the uh, you know back and forth in md we, uh, even though i simmed it but i wanted certain way stylized and uh, it is very helpful for uh, 3d printing actually so uh, it gives you way fast result and it's way easier 
and you could see this i had used this hybrid approach i wanted uh, because it's a seven, uh, 70 uh, centimeters uh, 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 you know statue it is 3d print statue and i was uh, uh, you know uh, wanted a certain way of wrinkle because uh, it has to uh, you know read it well when you are 3d printing so uh, you know bold and chunky uh, it should have been bold and chunky so this process gave me uh, uh, you know a uh, quick turnaround for me and it was very fast to get the result this is also oh sorry uh, this is also one uh, same process which i used hybrid uh, process where i was sculpting as well as using the simulation this is also uh, one of the work which i created majority of the cloth in this fashion hybrid fashion you could see this this is also the same process uh, it was very fast for me where i was able to control uh, certain wrinkles as i wanted because uh, you, uh, the approach for 3d print is entirely different so uh, you know md helped me to uh, uh, get certain result way faster and uh, the process was nice and enjoyable where uh, you know you can sculpt you can simulate so it's a blend of both it's a fun to work using this technique Yes, thank you. Very cool to see that hybrid approach um, that, that you shared, kind of both aspects of that. Thank you very much, Vichar. Um, yeah, as someone who spends a lot of time in ZBrush myself, I think you just lower, like totally lowered the threshold as a point of entry for artists that, that don't understand um, patterns and things like that to go, oh, wow, I can bring my geo from, from ZBrush right into Marvelous and get all of the simulations going. It's very cool to see. Yep. Uh, it's it's very friendly for an artist, uh, you know, who doesn't know to do pattern because uh, I want to get a certain result. And it's very useful for 3D printing process also because it gives you very quick, very fast result. Yeah. No. And thank you so much for sharing so much of your process too. I think that's I want to go try some of that hybrid approach right away <laughs> myself. <laughs> so great to see. Um, let's see uh, if Miranda, if there's a way we uh, could bring everybody, all of our guests back up on the screen um, as we're finishing up, we'll bring Eric back in too. We've got Megan here. <laughs> Hello, I have returned. <laughs> really a great, great evening uh to spend you guys uh, apparently eric's having some some technical issues so we don't know if we'll be able to get him onto the screen at the end um but were there any any um any parting words you guys wanted to share um any kind of parting thoughts um and i think as you're doing that eric may try to uh re-enter uh leave and re-enter the stream so we can get up on the screen as well but yeah maybe starting with you megan if you if you had any kind of finishing thoughts in context of everything we've covered tonight yeah, I I also want to I wanted to say uh, watching Vichar's uh, way of uh, of working was really great because I oh, I specifically <laughs> catered mine to like the classic method of uh, apparel making, whereas Vichar was with doing his in the way of um, I'm sorry Vichar was doing his in the way of what is the most practical for him. Um, so it's really great seeing everyone doing um, the the different ways and showcasing how you can make it with with either no experience or with experience and understanding patterns. So it's there's different ways to learn how to use the software and it's great seeing people do it in their different ways and whichever works best for you is going to be the way that you're going to work the fastest. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and uh, Vichar, is anything you wanted to kind of, uh, any closing remarks you had uh, this evening? Yes, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the, uh, you know, the sculpting or creating anything. You, uh, MD gives a lot of, uh, you know, the support. Uh, it's not only that you have to use 2D pattern, uh, you can uh, create in either way also. But the only thing is you need to know the strength of the software first so that then you can play around. So learn ABCD to make a sentence. So uh, uh, so you need to know the basic of it. It's, it's a shortcut. Don't follow this immediately. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, try to follow a step-by-step -step process. It looks eye candy and now it feels like, yeah, I, I don't want to learn anything. I can do this. Uh, please don't carry away from this. Uh, make sure that you learn in a right way. And this is all uh, helps you when you come to production and you have to find a way to, you know, do the things faster because you will get very uh, shorter time and you have to turn around the work and how do you do it? How smartly you can do it? So for that, it will be very helpful. But a key note is, uh, you know, practice, understand 2D patterns, even though you're not good at it, you, you browse it, you have in, in fingertips, you have a lot of information about it. 
and uh, you know uh, as uh, no, uh, you know marvelous has lot of tutorial like uh, you know free tutorials you should go and watch it understand better because uh, you know having extra knowledge is always plus because when i'm talking about game industry because artist uh, ignore because they say okay i am good sculptor i can sculpt it off but uh, you know every project won't be in that way you have to use the uh, you know marvelous designer so uh, better to have good knowledge about it because now the future is more of you know real sim real cloth and uh, you know more hyper realistic so so ha having this knowledge would easily help to build your career and and just like just like any 3d software package it, it's a you know it's how it works for you whatever makes m m the most sense for you to approach the problem is it you can work from a oh. Oh. oops looks oh, like no. we... <laughs> it's been having some technical difficulties today yeah and that's you know that's just par for the course these days uh with how much <laughs> everything's happening virtually online and so yeah. i think we're all used to that for sure uh, we'll see if we do get Eric back, but yeah, I think all each one of you mentioned in in your own way uh, when you're presenting that it there's you really should learn all of the tools that are available to you because having knowledge of all of the tools in, in an industry environment, of course, mm -hmm. is going to help you to make the right choice to get the highest quality at the fastest speed. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Okay. Um, well, um, yeah, I. I don't, I don't have anything else to, to contribute at this point. We'll see if we get Eric back, but I just wanted to thank each of you, Vichar, Megan, and of course, Eric, uh, who's been with us this evening. And we've really gotten a full, full course meal in the sense that we've seen what Marvelous is about. Um, Megan, you've demonstrated from more uh, from the traditional side coming in, how you were able to design there. And then Vichar, you kind of, you sort of flipped the script and, and showed all of us who know, have less knowledge of patterns, how we can utilize it. And you know the team at, at MD is giving us some fantastic free learning content. So really, I, I think you've removed, you've, you've removed any excuse that someone could have <laughs> <laughs> to not learn the software. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I just want to mention, guys, uh, we will be uh, live streaming again uh, tomorrow morning Pacific Standard Time uh, at 11 a.m. We are going to be, uh, I'll, I'll be having the pleasure of hosting uh, digital artist Kendrick C, who is going to be uh, sharing with us how um, he is creating some really stunning uh, visual development uh, art using um, Blender as a 3D platform to generate some beautiful 2D illustrations. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but in the meantime, guys, uh, everybody continue to stay safe and stay creative. Uh, Megan, Vichar, and Eric, thank you so much for the time you've given us this evening. And we'll see you back here again soon uh, at the Nomen stream. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.